place in life when we need an exchange. We all need to change or exchange something or someone. What is most important is who we exchange with. My exchange is with God. Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Hetnot, and welcome to The Exchange. Today, we're talking about developing some strategies. And not only developing strategies, but recognizing strategies. And today, I am your spiritual warfare strategist. So grab a pen and paper, grab your Bible, and let's talk about the three warfare strategies of the enemy. Because we all know that the enemy's out there going to and fro, seeking whom he might devour. Well, he's after us. Let's face it. We know that he's after us. We know that he wants to devour us. He came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. To kill our joy. To kill it. I mean, not just kill our joy, but to annihilate our joy. Steal. To steal our peace. He wants the peace of God that belongs to us. And to destroy our finances, destroy our marriages, destroy our families, destroy our children. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. And if we don't recognize his warfare strategies, I mean, he has many of them, but I'm going to focus on three of the most devastating of those strategies that he throws at us. So we're going to talk about first deception. And deception is the act of hiding the truth, especially to get an advantage. So he wants to hide the truth to get an advantage over you. It's not that he's going to lie to you, but he's going to deceive you. And in that deception, he's going to use whatever tricks and traps and snares that he can to keep you from getting to the truth of whatever the matter is. If there is deception going on in your marriage, he's going to hide the truth from you. If there's deception going on in your finances, on your job, he wants that deception to literally take you out. But God did not give us a spirit of fear. He gave us power, love, and a sound mind. And this is what it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. He will use deception to bring you to a point literally of no return. Because God wants to give you a way out. He wants to show you that there is a direction, there's a purpose, there's a plan, there's everything that you need to avoid that deception, which could lead to destruction. But sometimes we get so caught up in the destructive nature of a thing that we literally run head on into the destruction that awaits us. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants you to run head on into the destruction, head on into the very thing that's going to tear you down. He wants you to be deceived. But the Bible tells us, be not deceived. Don't be deceived in anything. The Bible also tells us in Ephesians 4 and 27, give no place to the devil. So if I give no room for him, he can't come against me and deceive me. Give no place to the devil, give no room to the devil to come against you in any shape, form, or fashion. Because that is one of the greatest tactics that he will use. He won't lie to you, but he will deceive you. And so in that deception, he will do any and everything to make it seem plausible, make it seem real, make it seem like, oh, this is this is okay. But it that's not the truth. Because in that deception, There are lies and there are manipulations. And think about this. In that deception, there are layers to your freedom from the deception. But he he doesn't want you to dig through the layers of the deception. He just wants you to believe it on the surface and take it at face value. Deception is just the act of keeping you from the truth. Next is distraction. And a distraction is something that takes your attention away from what you're supposed to be doing. So in the distractions, the enemy can grab your attention and literally hold on to it. He grabs your attention and he takes you away from the focus that you should have on what God is calling you to do, or dealing with your family, dealing with your marital problems, dealing with your finances. He distracts you over here 
because this over here seems more plausible and easier to deal with. So the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 7 and 35, I am saying this for your benefit to not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you to serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. So whatever it takes to serve the Lord best, do that because God will allow you to hear him if you're listening and he will get you back on track from the distractions that are trying to drag you away, pull you away, or pull you down, or all of the above. The enemy has warfare strategies that we know not of. Because he won't come to you the same way every time. He will come to you in such a way that you don't even know it's a distraction. You'll think you're doing the Lord's work, and guess what? You're doing something that the enemy told you to do. It might be a good thing. But is it a God thing? It might be a good thing, but is it a God thing? Is it God-centered? Is it God-focused? Is it a God factor in it? Will God get the glory out of what you're doing, or are you just doing something over here because you're distracted? And let's face it, we've all had distractions, but the key is, do we recognize the distractions? When we recognize the distractions, then we can move in the right direction. Then we can walk in a different path. Then we can move in the, the pathway that God has for us, a narrow path. It may not be as pretty as you think. It may not be as pretty as you want. It may not be as smooth as you want, but it is a God-given path. But the distractions of the enemy, check this out, will never bring you to discomfort. Satan wants to make you comfortable in everything that you do, because he doesn't want you distracted he, from him. He wants you distracted from God, but he doesn't want you distracted from him. So he will use every strategy and every tactic to keep you from the fullness of God, the peace of God, the joy of God, the power of God, the love of God, the light of God, and the right standing with God, because he's got you distracted. Just like in Luke 10 and 40, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She said to him, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work myself? Tell her to help me. So here you are being busy, being busy, doing all of the stuff that you're supposed to do. But God wants you to just sit at his feet and learn from him. Sit at his feet and understand what he is calling you to do. Because that work is going to be there. That job is going to be there. Cutting the grass, it will be there. But the distractions of the enemy will keep you from the fullness of God. Because what God has for you at that very moment, it may be the very thing that revolutionizes your life. It may be the very thing that he uses to get you to another place and another space in him. It may be the very thing that takes your financial situation from from the pit to the promise, from poverty to wealth, from sickness to health, from turmoil to calm. He may be right there on the edge of moving you to a whole other place in him. And all you have to do is not allow the enemy to distract you. Again, give no place to the devil. The one thing that the enemy wants us to do is be distracted. The one thing he wants us to do is not focus on God, but the focus on him. The enemy wants you focused on him. God wants you centered in him. There's a difference. Focused on the enemy means you're looking here and there, to and fro, trying to find the answers to whatever the enemy is throwing at you. But God wants you centered in him so that nothing around you, see when you're in the center of something, it's hard for other things to grab at you. Because you're in the center of God's will. You're in the center of God's peace. You're in the center of his love. You're in the center of his joy. Because you have made him the center of your life, your joy, your peace, your hope, your healing. You have literally made him your center. So when you make him your center, then guess what? Nothing else matters. Because you're in the center of God's will. And that is an absolute perfect place to be. Because the enemy can't distract you. The enemy won't try to literally, he will always keep trying. He'll just leave you for a while, but he'll be back. 
And when he comes back, he's going to come back with a different strategy. He's going to have to come back with a different deception. He's going to come back with a different distraction, a different trick, a different trap, a different snare. He's going to come back with whatever he can use to throw at you, including the kitchen sink. And it, doesn't, it does not matter how you feel about it. What matters is, what is God saying about it? Are you going to get in your feelings and stomp off like a little child? Or are you going to stand dressed in your warfare uh, armament, dressed in your, arm, arm, your warfare array, dressed in your warfare strategies to destroy the lies and tricks and traps of the enemy? Are you going to be in that place? Well, I sincerely pray that you are. And that next one, division. Oh my goodness. The enemy will bring division in your home, in your school, in your workplace, in the church, in your marriage, in your friendships. And what is division? Division is the action of separating something into parts or the process of being separated or disagreement between two or more groups typically producing tension and hostility. Right now, there's so much division between the church and the government. There's di division between the church and the church. There's dis division between the church and the people. There's just divisions all around. So now we're distracted by the divisions and we're deceived by the divisions. So here we got deception, distractions, and the, at the center of it is division. Because once the division sets in, I'm telling you, we have got ourselves some kind of trouble. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 and 25, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. There should be no division in the church. There should be no division between the people because we are one. One mind, one body, one spirit, one Christ. There's no three or four, 12 different Jesuses. There's no four or five, 12 different gods. There's one Jehovah God, one El Shaddai, one all-sufficient one. And if we grab hold to that knowledge, we'll stop being in all these cliques and factions and things that are dividing us at a crucial time in the history of this nation. We, my generation, your generation possibly, never saw all of the atrocities and the pandemics of the past. But here we are in 2020 facing a global pandemic and we're so divided on so many issues that America is, has not been made great again. America has been made to hate again. We are mad at the government, mad at the church, mad at the people. There's so many divisions that we are just mad at everybody. And when we become so angry at things and at people, we can't see our focus. We don't have our focus on God. Our focus needs to be in him, on him, for him, and with him. Because when we focus on the very thing that is going to keep us together, hear this. The only person that can keep us together is the Lord. The only person that can bring us back together is the Lord. The only people that can give us clarity in this season is the Lord. And when we live it out, love it out, walk it out, talk it out. See, a lot of things are happening because there is no communication among the people. There's no communication within churches. There's no co communication within the people in the churches. There's just simply no communication. So if the government and the churches are not communicating, what do you have? Division. If the government is not communicating with the government, and I mean the Democrats and the Republicans, they spend so much time fighting amongst each other that they can't help the people who are out here hurting. I mean, they're not missing their big fat paychecks, but look at all the people that are hurting right now, financially, emotionally, mentally, physically. This COVID-19 is really taking a toll on our economy, on our, our, our people, on our health. It's taken a toll on our children because they can't get into schools and get the proper education. Look how COVID-19 has literally brought division in every area. If you stop and just sit back and say, you know, Dr. Jack, he's right. This thing has brought division in my home. Look at the domestic violence rate that has gone up since COVID-19 began in the United States alone. 
Look at the domestic violence and how it has risen to literally an all-time high just because people have to shelter in place. That's saying something in and of itself. That's saying that because we're in the house, possibly 24-7, seven, seven days a week, we're A, tired of looking at each other, B, we're not finding creative ways to coexist in the same house, C, we're unhappy with ourselves, or D, we're just unhappy with our lives all completely. And now it's causing us to face some things because when we were able to go out and do things, we could avoid some, some confrontations. When we were able to go out and hang with our friends and go here and go there and do this and do that, we were able to avoid facing some of the objects, some of the problems that we had in the first place. Now you stay right there and we'll be right back with more of the exchange and the three warfare strategies of the enemy. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back with more of the exchange and the three warfare strategies of the enemy. So now I've told you what the warfare strategies of the enemy, what they are. The division, distractions, and the deception. You know what they are. Now you need to recognize when they're coming in your path. You need to recognize when the enemy is throwing distractions in your direction. And the way you're going to do that is through prayer. The way you're going to recognize them is through fasting. The way you're going to recognize them is take a step back from whatever the situation is and ask yourself, is this of God? Ask yourself, is, is this going to glorify God? Is this going to edify my marriage? Take a step back and say, take a deep breath. Take a step back and go, and just pause for a moment. When you see the distractions coming, when you hear the deceptions of the enemy, when you look at the division that he's bringing, take a step back and say, okay, this doesn't give God glory. And this is causing me, it could cause you a physical or emotional headache. It could cause you some anxiety. When you see something coming in your, your direction, there's a little check in your spirit that the Holy Spirit of God will give you if you're paying attention. Which brings me to my point. You need to pay closer attention to what the Lord is saying to you. He said to tell his people to listen to him and listen for him. So let me reverse that. First of all, you have to be listening for him in order to listen to him, which means to listen to what he has to say to you. So when he comes to you and says, Nay, nay, don't go to that particular place tonight because it's going to be danger there. Don't try to question him. Don't try to figure it out because we're always trying to look, to, look down, look to the left, look to the right, look up. We're trying to look everywhere but in the direction of God. We're trying to look everywhere but where God needs us to look. Centered on him, focused on him. You need to have laser light fo focus when it comes to paying attention to God. Listen, listen to God. Listen for God. And when you're listening for God, you may be in your car and it may mean turning the radio off, turning off your ear pod or your iPod or your whatever that is. Turn that off so you can hear God clearly and distinctly. It may be turning off the television. You know, one of the best places for me to go outside and just listen is to go out in the backyard and just sit and just in the, the quietness, if it's in the evening, it's quiet in the backyard, it's quiet, you hear the birds chirping, and you can literally listen. All of the loud clanging cymbals, the music of loud, the TV constantly, the radio going, all of these things, nothing wrong with any of those because you're watching TV right now or you're listening to the radio. So there's nothing wrong. They all have their place. But the greatest place that you can be is right in a position, in a posture, 
that you can hear God, <clears throat> excuse me, in a posture that you can hear God. And that means the posture of your heart and the posture of your mind. The posture of your heart and the posture of your mind. Those are vital to being able to hear the voice of the Lord our God. Because the all-sufficient one wants to make you sufficient. The all-sufficient one wants to bring you to a place where he can give you his fullness. He can give you everything your heart desires. He said, I want to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that's working in you. So let me ask you today, what kind of power are you walking in? Are you walking in the power of the true and living God? Or are you walking in the power of the enemy, the deceptions, the distractions, and the divisions? Are you causing trouble every time you come through the door? Are you angry all the time? Are you bitter all the time? Are you, have you walked away from what you should love most, and that's God? Have you walked away from, here you go, have you walked away from your first love because you're so mad at being quarantined in the house? Well, that self-quarantine is for your safety and the safety of others. I mean, it's really sad when one person can infect so many people because they refuse to listen. I was watching the news or reading the news the other day, and one woman at a, a hair salon, or whatever you call a hair salon, exposed 91 people to COVID-19. Now, somewhere along the way, you had to know that by day three or four or five, you were feeling some kind of way in your body. Because this thing, you may be asymptomatic, but there ought to be a little check in your spirit that says, I'm not feeling my best. Uh, a little check in your spirit saying, well, maybe I need to take my own temperature. A little check in your spirit that says, let me see if my oxygen level is where it should be. Somebody ought to be taking the temperature of people because they're supposed to be doing it anyway. But that's not for me to deal with. What I'm saying to you is, you have to be mindful of what the enemy is doing in you and with you and through you because the woman went back to work and infected 91 people or not infected I'm gonna take that back exposed 91 people within a matter of four days we don't want to be exposed to the lies and the trips and the traps of the enemy yes you have to pay your bills yes you need to work to feed your family but not at the expense of 91 other souls this thing is not all about us. It's about other people. And when we get that in our spirit, see, the deception of the enemy will cause you to go back to work before your time. The deception of the enemy will cause you to go back to church before it's time or reopen before it's time. The deception of the enemy will say, I got to get back in the building. I got to go to the building. Well, if you got to go to the building, ask yourself, why is the building more important than getting back to God? Why is the building more important than getting on your face and getting in God's face, seeking God's face? All you have to do is take the time, back up, and just wait on Say, God, what is it that you would have me to do? Are you ready for me to go back into the building? Are you ready for me to go back to work? Father God, will you provide finances for my family to eat and pay bills? Will you provide for me? I trust you because you are the all-sufficient one. All sufficient means he has everything that you need. All that you need, everything you need is provided in him. And when we trust God for the fullness of our lives, then he can do what he said, exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that's working in us. But we first got to be in tune with him, laser light focus on him, listening for him so we can listen to him for the direction, for the path, for the purpose, for everything that he has for us before the very foundation of the world. And I firmly believe if we could just fine tune ourselves to the spirit of the living God, we wouldn't be in such a dire position right now. And this position is not going to destroy us. Literally what it's going to do is purify us and it's going to make us, those that call, that know that they know that they know that they are children of the Most High God, we will know how to develop the strategy needed to do what we need to do to navigate through this pandemic. I believe it. I'm holding on to it. I'm not going to ever let that go because even in the, I told someone the other day, even in the midst of 
COVID-19, I said, I beat cancer. I am not allow, about to allow COVID-19 to take me out. So if it means staying sheltered in place, I'm here. If it means being here, I get, look, we're in our new studio now. And I got to, the first place I wanted to do was go and get on my face before God. I was able to get out of the house, come and utilize our brand new studio, which I'm so excited about. And I hope that you like it because I think it's just beautiful. And as the show progresses, you'll get to see more of the studio. But I stayed in the house until it was the time of my release. And it's easy to record and do whatever you need to do from home, but you just have to be mindful that you cannot go out before your appointed time. That's it, plain and simple. I listened for God, and then I listened to God. And he said, not yet, daughter. It's not time. Not yet, daughter. It's not time. It didn't bother me that it wasn't time, but I knew that the time would come when I could leave the house because with a compromised immune system, I don't need to be out in the public. I put myself at risk by going out there too soon. Walmart's going to be there. The, dro the stores are going to be there. Shopping's going to be there. All of those things are going to be there when I'm ready to go out. Those things are going to be there when you're ready to go out. All we have to do is not allow the enemy to deceive us, not allow the enemy to distract us with the lies and tricks and traps and snares of the enemy, and not allow the enemy to bring division in our homes, in our marriages, with our children, in the church, with the government, on our jobs. Not allow the enemy to bring the distractions, because that's all he wants to do is distract you so that you don't get the fullness of what God has for you. And it is my prayer that this message today has been one that will encourage you, inspire you, educate you, and motivate you to truly walk in the fullness that God has for you. And you, are, you will be able to hear him clearly, hear him abundantly, and listen for him at every single turn. And now you be blessed of the Lord. And I want to thank you for watching and listening to this broadcast. And I will be, be with you again next week right here. Prayerfully in our new studio. So have an awesome, awesome week. And I'll see you later. Bye for now. There are times in life when we need an exchange. We all need to change or exchange something or someone. What is most important.